While my main focus will be pass rush and defensive line when it comes to the Detroit Lions, there's no denying that the Detroit Lions need some help in the secondary as well. Now, the Detroit Lions are going to, I'm not going to say be faced with a dilemma, but they're going to have some decisions to make. This is the most money that we'll have for in Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell's tenure. We'll have somewhere between... 58 and 70 million dollars this coming off season. And there's some things that we need to do extend Amir Ross St. Brown and do whatever we're going to do with Jared Goff. Then we have to decide whether we're going to keep guys like CJ Gardner Johnson and Josh Reynolds. And then after that, we're going to have to address some very specific needs on this team. Now, with working with Les last year, the Brad Holmes, he really does work his magic in the offseason, kind of at a bargain. We bring in C.J. Gardner-Johnson, one-year deal, $6.5 million guaranteed. Emmanuel Mosley, one-year deal. We bring in Cam Sutton and David Montgomery on three-year deals. Well, the reason that I brought this up is because I think we gave David Montgomery $18 million for three years. We gave Cam Sutton um, $33 for three years I can't remember how much of that is guaranteed and that contract right there is the highest amount that Brad Holmes has paid out when it comes to a free agent and we'll have more to work with this year and we're going to be focusing a lot on free agency because you're going to the Detroit Lions free agent market will kind of dictate a lot of what they do in the draft they took three secondary people Therefore, they only drafted one person in the secondary, which was Brian Branch. So just because they go strong and hard somewhere in free agency doesn't necessarily mean they won't add an additional piece in the draft. And I think that that focus in free agency is going to be the defensive line. I think we're going to see two to three major moves be made on the defensive line in free agency. And I think we're going to see some secondary stuff as well, because you got to remember that a lot of these rookies will come in and will they be able to start? Because we'll have much less capital than we had last year. The 29th overall pick, is he going to be an immediate impact player on the Detroit Lions. So that's something to think about. And also will Brad Holmes draft up, but there is a guy who requested a trade deadline. He, he, he wanted to be traded at the trade deadline did not happen. His name is Jalen Jackson or Jalen Johnson. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Axon Jackson, Carl Weathers, man, Uh, Jalen Johnson from the Chicago bears. Now I wouldn't be surprised if we made this happen. Because Cam Sutton would then drop down to the number two cornerback and Jalen Johnson will be number one. In addition to that, another David Montgomery teammate. So we'll have Monty who played with the Bears and then Jalen as well. Now, according to NFL.com at the Pro Bowl games, he was asked about his future. And here's what he had to say. He said, hearts definitely in Chicago. Mine's definitely on the money. Johnson told NFL.com at Saturday's Pro Bowl practice. So, I mean, we'll figure out if we can make both of them come together and get something done. I'm looking forward to see what's to come. Now, this guy had a uh, is playing out his rookie contract drafted in 2020. So another guy that was drafted in 2020, very similar to Justin Matabuke, and he's had a breakout season. Here's what he continued to say. He said, As far as um, does he believe he's an elite corner? He said, no doubt, no doubt. Johnson said when asked if he believed he had established himself as one of the best corners in the league. I think just like I was saying, just through my career, just continuing to get better, continuing to get better. In 14 games, Johnson posted 36 tackles, 10 pass breakups, forced a fumble, and hauled in four interceptions, including a pick six. His INT tally was four times his career mark over the previous three seasons, which means he had one INT over three seasons, having recorded just one pick prior. Uh, There you go. Being able to cause turnovers was an onus for Johnson. And having done so, he believes he's proven himself to be a complete package at cornerback. So now it is going to come down to how much money he is going to probably command. And according to Spot Track, says the looming question is whether general manager Ryan Pose will agree to pay Johnson the 18 to 21 million per year that a top paid corners have garnered 
after one blockbuster season at the perfect time. Johnson is only 24 years old. So now we know that our general manager, the, this guy, Brad, Brad Holmes is, I must admit, he might not have the best track record drafting receivers and, you know, some misses, no doubt. You know, Levi, Ann Muzurike, things like that. But one thing Brad is very good at money-wise, he's very good when it comes to, you know, doing things with the money. So 18 to 20 million. Now I have Cam Sutton pulled up here and I want to know, let's see what Cam Sutton is getting for his time in the Detroit Lions. I didn't even know he had a potential out after this coming season. Now keep in mind, Cam Sutton will be 29 years old this season, going into this season. Most of the bulk of his money is coming in year two. So this is what he's going to be here. And a lot of you folks, a lot of you were talking about how we need to can't cut Cam Sutton. It's not going to happen. Okay, Cam Sutton is going to be a Detroit Lion this year, whether you like it or not, whether you want to cut him or not. It's not happening. Cam Sutton will be a Detroit Lion for 2024 with a potential out after this coming season. This is still a pretty big cap hit. So I think Cam plays out the three-year contract with the Detroit Lions. But you can see here, his base salary is 10.5 and his cap hit is $12 million. Dead cap is 17. His cash value is $11 million. So with that being said, do I think that Cam Sutton, you know, obviously Cam Sutton is going to be around, but will Brad Holmes be able to, let me see. He gave David Montgomery about six a year. Cam Sutton, he gave him a 30, I can't remember. Let me see. It said he signed a $33 million deal, included a $10.9 million signing bonus with 22.5 guarantee with an at average annual salary of $11 million. So if you're talking talking about a number one corner, and this is what I, I listen. I'm trying to tell you guys over and over and over. If you look at the teams that simply draft, simply draft, there are not many that you can hold your hat on when it comes to pure drafting. There are a few. And then you look at them, the Cincinnati Bengals, they made the Super Bowl, but they did not win it. You have the San Francisco 49ers. They've pretty much built through the draft. They haven't added no, I take that back. They traded for Christian McCaffrey. That's why they're going to the Super Bowl. This guy single-handedly put up 100 yards on the ground on us. So there has to be a move or two made in free agency that can turn the tide or via a trade that can turn the tide when it comes to going all the way, going the distance. And I have said this in my last video. I do not think that grit is going to be enough. And I think that the Detroit Lions, Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, they strategically put together this roster. So I don't think that when you look at the at the draft, now look at the draft. The Detroit Lions, in the time that Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have been here, right? The first year we took Panay Sewell. That was coming off of Matt Patricia's 5-11 and 11 season. We had the seven pink in the draft. We took Panay Sewell, okay? Absolute dog. Year two, we finished 13, 313 and one. We take Aiden Hutchinson in the first round. Trade up. We used the Matthew Stafford capital to get, we already know, right? Um, Josh Pascal, Jameson Williams, Jameer Gibbs, Brian Brandt, like if you're Melifonwu, all of those guys were in that. Okay. That's where the bulk of our team will have been built at. The building through the draft, quote unquote. Now we skip to 2023. Jameer Gibbs, Brian Branch. Jack Campbell, Sam Laporta. Okay, the building, most of it is done. Now we're going into 2024, and we have the 29th overall pick. We have no additional first-round picks, no additional second-round picks. We have two third-round picks. There's no doubt that most, the bulk of the building through the draft has been done. Now it's just a piece here and a piece there. And you have to ask yourself, is the 29th overall pick, going to immediately impact the Detroit Lions. It, possible. Sam Laporta, Brian Branch, both second-round picks. You could argue Brian Branch should have been a first-round pick. Immediate impact. So there is there is a possibility. 
but the bulk of our team has been built already, right? So the Detroit Lions are going, the reason I went through that whole spiel is because I see dumb comments in the comment section about, i rather save the money here and save the money go there. And it's not, those aren't the gum, dumb comments, but this whole trust the process and everything like that, that's exactly what we're doing. But at the same time, Brad Holmes has showed you that he's willing to spend something. Now the, the, the key is how much is he willing to spend and for whom? That is the question. So the Detroit Lions will, my, this is my prediction. I've been battling back and forth with this for a long time. Is Brad Holmes a cheapskate? Is he true dollar store general? Or is it because his hands were tied? And I think that it's it's equal amounts both. However, I think this year we're going to see something that we haven't seen to this extent. I think Brad Holmes makes a major move for a major player in free agency. He was building up to that Cam Sutton upgrade over who we had last year. David Montgomery, upgrade over Jamal Williams. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, upgrade over Deshaun Elliott. He's going to do the same thing, and it's either going to come in. He, the way that he can do this, he could get two people. I'm going to predict two signings on the defensive line and an impact player on the secondary. So out of the three major people that will sign in free agency, I think two of them are going to be on the defensive line. One of them is going to be in the secondary at least. And I think that at least two of them are going to be dogs, like legit dogs. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How would you feel about Jalen Johnson being a Detroit Lion? Are you? Would you be willing to pay him the potential um, 18 to 21 million? You're going to pay for people and go back to the New York Jets, the San Francisco 49ers, the Cincinnati Bengals. The, well, the, the San Francisco 49ers do not count because they made a move for Christian McCaffrey. So once you did that, you threw them out. You threw They built through the draft. Yes, Nick Bosa, uh, Fred Warner, you do all that stuff. But they made some impact players, Hargrave, uh, Christian McCaffrey. So you make impact moves. So the Detroit Lions are going to do the same thing. Building through the draft is one part, but you have to be able to cap these drafts off with solid free agent pieces, right? So let me know your thoughts in the comments below and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel on a push to get to 20K. Man, Super Bowl Sunday would be nice, but we're going to miss that. So let's say if we can get there by March 1st or by the start of free agency, when we'll give the old 33-inch lion off to a public subscriber, and then we're going to do giveaways every 1,000 subscribers after that. So look forward to that. Memberships are going to be opening very soon as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions.